Hey everyone, Rob here, and I have some more updates on the eruption as well as the earthquakes and the potential that there could be magma breaking through the surface closer to Kalia. Now, what we have here is the latest satellite data from Sentinel 1 from the area near Kalia, which shows no clear signs that the magma is breaking its way through the surface. Now, this latest image, which shows changes in the area from September 23rd to October 5th, shows no, so, no signs of changes in the Earth's crust in the area of the earthquakes that have been going on since the end of around September, end-ish. Now, however, this does not mean that magma isn't moving at such a depth that's not visible in this sa satellite data. And they've been running models based on the latest earthquake and survey data, and the models indicate that if magma is accumulating, it's not in a large quantity and or it's at a considerable depth that the satellite images just can't pick it up. Now, if magma is building up to a depth of more than five kilometers, but the seismic activity in the cluster is mostly at a greater depth than that, then it would not be visible on the satellite images until considerably more has accumulated. So it's they're still looking at closely monitoring this development and the activity near k Lear just to see what's going on and if you know something changes if, if there is magma below the surface the next thing i want to take a look at is the earthquake data over the last two days so, you know 48 hours we're going to take a look at this first now the magnitude of the earthquakes near k Lear has decreased a lot in recent days although it's still pretty high they're saying around 8,800 earthquakes have been detected in the area since the eruption began, or the earthquake cluster began, sorry, on September 27th. And it's not ruled out that magma isn't moving around at a great depth. Although, like we were just talking about here, looking at this image, it also shows that it's unlikely that there's anything close to the surface. I mean, they would have seen it by now. Now, Thor uh, Thorvaldur, a volcanologist at the University of Iceland, when he was talking to one of the news agencies here, he said that although it's not visible in the satellite data, it is still possible that magma is trying to find its way to the surface. And so he points out that the magnitude of the earthquakes is not necessarily a direct indication that magma is on its way up, but we need to look at how high the activity is. And he said one possible explanation for all of this activity is that the magma is trying to find a new way to the surface, like we thought. And he points out that there still is lava rising near the surface of the eruption in Gelingadala, and therefore the eruption is still ongoing, despite the fact that we're not really seeing much coming out of the cones. And it could mean that the eruption in Gelingadala is slowly coming to an end, but it also could mean that the magma is going in other directions. So it's kind of up in the air right now on where things are, are but it is good to keep having more and more information and know that everyone is monitoring this and, and making sure that we are all up to date. Now, the Meteorological Office, they reported just over 200 earthquakes that were detected in the Kalia area since you know midnight yesterday. And the largest in that time frame was magnitude of 2.4. So now there's nothing going over three. It is very windy in Iceland. And they're saying that because of that wind, it is possible that the meters will not be able to measure all of the earthquakes that are occurring in the area. So that is, again, something that we need to take in as a factor because it may look like there's less, but if the meters are not registering it correctly, then perhaps we're missing out on some important data. But let's jump into the actual table so you can see some of the numbers. And you can see over the last 48 hours, there's only been 227, and there have been none over a magnitude of 3. The last major one was on Tuesday, and that was a magnitude of 3.4. So it's it's been a couple days now that since we've had something a little bit beefier, I guess what you would say, a little bit more intensity with these earthquakes. The last thing I want to point out is if we're taking a look at the, the cluster here. So people have asked me where Kedalia is, and it's this right here. And if we zoom out, we can see where that's located based on the airport. Kedalia is, you know, sort of you follow the line down. And then, of course, the Reykjavik area up here. So that's where Kalir is. Very close to what's going on, uh, but closer to the road. And it's a little bit more accessible. You can see here there's a road that takes you straight here. And then you can just kind of like walk. But another interesting development that has happened, not in this system, 
But if we zoom out and we go up and we can see there's a red dot up here. Now, this is Iceland. If we zoom out the whole map, you can see there's dots all over the place. There's a seismic activity all over the place. What they're saying is interesting about this one here in close to the Snifelsnes Peninsula is that there's an earthquake that was measured in the volcanic system of Lusfjall in this western-ish Snifelsnes part of Iceland. And this quake had a magnitude of 2.9, so it's not it's not huge when we're talking about ones that are over 3 down in Kjellir and Gellingendal and all that stuff. But what makes it unusual is it's the second largest that's been detected in this area this year. Now, a post by the Volcano and Nature group of the south on Facebook stated that the earthquake was measured about 5 kilometers west of Lengvat in Mirar and is a sign of increased seismic activity in the area. So again, the reason that this one's sort of coming up is they're saying that the seismic activity is very unusual and to a certain, certain extent, they're saying that the earthquakes like this or even earthquakes in general are very rare in the Seifelsnes volcanic system. I believe that they said that the last one erupted in this area around a thousand years ago. So we're looking at something interesting that's going on. One other thing I want to do is we're just going to jump backwards in time here. And we're going to take a look at over the last year or so all of the earthquakes you can see how many there are and we will hit show me all of them taking a look at the map of all the earthquakes you can see clearly see the pattern that's following tectonic plates and of course we have the eruption going on down here where there's a you know a huge amount of earthquakes seismic activity but over here is what we're we're, we're looking at it's unusual to have earthquakes and so having one that's getting higher intensity corresponding with some of the other stuff that's going on is uh, something that they're going to keep an eye on. And then, of course, there are other areas which we are looking at. If I just reset this for a second, other areas that we're looking at possibly having some eruption potential, I guess. And that's kind of over here, right above this Vatnjok National Park. So a couple of areas that are kind of we're, we're taking a look at, of course, possibly some magma coming to the surface near Kelir and then we have of course the rising land and the interesting stuff going on over here and then now we have Sneifel's Nest looking like it might start waking up so who knows maybe all of Iceland will be erupting at the same time I hope not because that sounds like a horrible thing to happen on an island but uh, yeah I mean you can't control nature so it is what it is <laughs> fingers crossed right so I hope you found this interesting. If you did, I'll put a link to this map here so you can play around with the dates and you can take a look at some of the stuff. And uh, I'll link to this image as well so you can take a closer look if you want at the satellite data. So until next time, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.